Hey Tori, have you heard about this grocery store? Yeah, it's okay. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This week we're doing something we have never done before. We rented a road surfer camper van and took it on the road. This weekend we are in Turnat, Belgium. So this was actually supposed to happen way back in July uh, for Tori's birthday, but unfortunately she had that bit of an ankle injury, so we decided to delay it to sometime closer to my birthday. So it actually ends up being a dual birthday weekend. How convenient. Yeah, funny how that worked out for you. <laughs> we rented a spot through campspace.com in Turnat, Belgium. We're actually in the garden of this lovely home. Mm -hmm. We're having a wonderful time. So stick with us. We'll show you around the campground. We'll show you a bit about the camper, about Turnat. And tomorrow we're going to head to Ghent and spend the day there. And we'll take you along with us as well. Let's go. We picked up our road surfer from the Amstelveen location. Pickup was easy and just involved a quick review of the van and we were on our way. We packed up our things and headed out. It was around a two and a half hour drive to Turnot. So with a stop for dinner along the way, we arrived about 9 p.m. After we arrived, the host helped us get set up with a place to park as well as a power hookup. We were the only guests that weekend. Tori will now give a tour of our glamping oasis. All right, so these are the facilities that this campground offers. This is the uh, shower bathroom area. Which is important because our van doesn't have facilities in it. So yeah, these are open 24 hours. It's pretty nice actually. We have a little toilet here. Oops, toilet there. And then we have on the other side, we have a shower. And then we have a sink. Place to get ready in the morning, so that's nice. Um, they also have a sauna. So I think this is an extra cost. I think we actually paid extra for it. We haven't used it yet. But yeah, it's a really nice like um, sauna you can use. It says it takes an hour to warm up before you use it. I'm not exactly sure how you turn it on. <laughs> Maybe we'll figure that out later. It'd be kind of cool to come sit in the sauna for a bit. Uh, there's how to use the sauna in German. And they have a um, Small guest book here and some information about the facilities. And just a little, I guess, kind of chilling area for when you're done with the sauna or you want to hang out, read a book. There's a few books up there. Over in the garage there, they have a fridge where you can. Um, put your cold stuff if you need to. Also, they have drinks in there you can get, uh, pay for, it's just kind of an honor system. You take your drinks out and you write your name on a little paper with how many you take in and you can settle up later. Uh, this appears to be, this appears to be like a bocce ball area. The reason I think that's because it's gravel. And then at the end here, there's a set of bocce balls on the bench. <laughs> and then there's a swimming pool, which is like a pond nature swimming pool. It is, uh, I don't know. It's, it's kind of cool. I wish it was a bit warmer. We would try it out. But yeah, it looks like really nice though. And apparently all this common air you can also use. It's, it's okay to use as well. Nice little sitting area here with a fire pit. Here's, we have Lainey's camping set up here. This is her private oasis on the campground. 
Now for a quick tour of the van. Our van was the Volkswagen T6.1 California Ocean, otherwise known as the Surfer Sweep. It had quite a few kilometers on it, but otherwise was clean and in very good condition. You can see the roof is extended here to allow for an additional bunk and extra headroom inside. On the back left panel, you'll find the valve where you can fill up the internal water tank as well as the external power hookup. Inside the van, there is a fairly spacious sitting area along with a kitchenette. There is a table along the side of the rear bench that you can slide out and set up in that space. The rear bench also folds down to form one of the two beds. That is if you can get Lainey to give up her seat. Behind the rear bench seat, you'll find quite a bit of storage. Included at no extra charge with the rental is a box of kitchen tools including cups, plates, cutlery, pots and pans, a cutting board, and more. There is also a hookup here for the external shower. The hose is in the bottom of the left cabinet. Moving back to the center of the van, we'll look at the kitchenette. On the left is a fairly large refrigerated box. It holds more than you expect and got quite cold. We actually had some ice forming. In the center are two gas burners. We didn't use them during our trip. And on the right is a sink. This is good for rinsing dishes. Below the sink and burners, you'll find a couple of cabinets to store all your snacks and kitchen supplies. Up top is the second bed. You can fold it up during the day to give yourself extra headroom in the van. With this second bed, you could theoretically sleep four people, but it would be tight. We brought our own bed linens, but Road Surfer does offer some as well, of course, for an extra charge. Here's the table that can be set up inside. The front seats swivel around so four people can sit around the table. Clipped on the inside of the sliding door, you'll find an outdoor table. Pair this with the folding chairs on the rear gate and you can set up a nice little outdoor space. It was so cozy that the homeowner's dog decided to come and enjoy it for a bit. Lainey was not amused. It was a beautiful day, so we headed out on foot to explore Ternat. The first stop was, of course, a castle. This is Kraukenberg Castle, built on a medieval foundation and extensively remodeled in the 16th and 18th centuries. The castle grounds are now a public park, but the building itself has been repurposed as a boarding school and are not publicly accessible. It is a beautiful space to visit. As we made our way around town, we came across another Ternat landmark, the St. Gertrude Church. This church, built of sandstone, keeps with the Brabant Gothic style of the 15th century when Belgian architect Jules Jacques van Isendijk renovated it. From there, we headed over to the town center in search of some lunch. We found a lovely little bistro called Aflahem Cafe. The beer was tasty and the food was as delicious as it looked. Smile. This town was also filled with some of the most charming houses. Tori repeatedly said that she wished she could pick one of these up and bring it back to Amsterdam.
Like most European towns, there is a train station that connects it to the neighboring region. You can board a train to nearby Brussels and be there in around 30 minutes. We spotted some helpful signs that told you how many steps, walking minutes, or cycling minutes to get to various points of interest. On the way back to our camper, we also found this wonderful bakery. Of course we had to pick up a couple treats to enjoy. They were delicious. After two nights in the camp space, it was time to pack up and head back home with a stop in Ghent on the way. But first, let's talk a little bit about whether a road surfer rental was worth it for us. We booked the van for three nights because unfortunately you cannot return the van on a Sunday. So we had to pay for an extra night we didn't really need. Our cost was 99 euros a night. This cost varies based on time of year. Now we did save 60 euros using a promo code. Extra costs included a 99 euro service fee and an 85 euro flat rate fee to bring a dog with us. We also opted for a flexible cancellation option that was 10 euros a night. This brought the total rental cost to 451 euros. As we mentioned, we booked our campground through Camp Space. We'll share a link in the description below. Two night rental here was 65 euros. And of course, we had to refill the gas and add blue tanks before we returned the van. That came to 103 euros. So the grand total for transport and lodging for the weekend came to around 619 euros. We think the value in renting Road Surfer probably works better for longer road trips rather than a quick weekend away. We could have stayed in a decent hotel for the same cost. Also, we discovered that from a comfort level, we weren't particularly suited for camper van life. Still though, we did enjoy this little getaway. Okay, now on to Ghent. Welcome in Ghent. Let's go explore the city. Let's go. After the slightly unnerving exercise of parking the van in an underground car park and finding Tori some much needed coffee, we started to explore the city. Our first stop was a medieval castle, right in the middle of the city. The Gravenstein is a medieval castle that dates from 1180 and was the residence of the Counts of Flanders until 1353. Since they do not allow dogs, we didn't tour the inside. It did seem particularly popular with the tourists though. Admissions for adults is 13 euros. While Tori was filming, I found a tasty snack. A Belgian waffle with chocolate, strawberries, and cream. The castle even had a moat. How cool is that? Lainey was a bit more interested in the local sense, though. Something we found really charming around Hent was the amount of public art. We found so many beautiful murals, sculptures, and paintings throughout the city. While all this walking around, we were getting thirsty. So we made our way over to the Dock Brewing Company Tap Room. The Tap Room includes two restaurants, Rock Barbecue and Rock Burgers. We are at Doc Brewing Company in Ghent, Belgium. Um, I went for a little 
sampler um, because I couldn't decide. I think I have three IPAs and three kind of stout porters that I'm pretty excited about. Um, and Tori got pink. Pink on the inside. Pink on the inside, which is very watermelon is what I'm hearing. It's a watermelon sour, I believe. Okay. And Lenny, what'd you get? She's the designated driver. Gentle, gentle. After our break at the brewery, we followed the Laia River back into the city center. On a beautiful day like we had, it provided for some fantastic views. Along one of the locks where a canal feeds into the river, they have a water slide for kayaks. This looked like a lot of fun. Oh hey there King William, the first of the Netherlands. It was a beautiful day and both locals and tourists were out enjoying the weather. Next to this charming square called Sint Bafsplein, you'll find Sint Bafs also known as St. Bavo's Cathedral. The beautiful Gothic style cathedral contains several important pieces of religious art, including the Ghent altarpiece. Unfortunately, again, having Laney, we didn't tour the inside this time. That does it for our fantastic day in Hent. It was time to pack up the van and drive back to Amsterdam. Thanks for coming along with us on this adventure. And don't forget to click those like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss out on our future travels. Tot ziens!